All right, video two of installing the single turbo and at the same time doing a front mounted intercooler. So first thing I did was I started cutting pipes. So you can just see, sorry for the dodgy camera weather, you can just see that pipe's gonna come out of the turbo there quite nicely. And then when I've got an extra curve on there, that'll go straight down that hole down to the exhaust pipe down there. So that's job one, I've got to do that, got to keep working on that. So when I've cleared the garage a bit, because at the minute I'm selling a drum kit and there's some other bits and I need to get my bench clear before I can angle grind and I'm a little bit more about covering my car up before I can angle grind. Um, so I don't think I'm going to do that today but um, it'll be in this video and then I'm going to get on with fitting the front mounted intercooler. So, so far what I have done on that, just to show you underneath, what I did was I used a pallet, uh, a um, trolley jack just to support the bottom of the intercooler. And then while it was on the supports, I got these bits of hardened alley. They're four mil thick bar of hardened alley. And um, fortunately, the way the placement needs to be to go through these M plates here, these M plastic plates here, I'm gonna come through that um, with the alley pipe. Um, with a bit of a spacer just on the bottom of the intercooler, I could probably go another couple of mil on there as well. Um, they fit really nicely um, and it's ever so easy to do. It's about sort of 260 mil long bars, just drilled a hole in one end, offered it up, had that on the jack and then drill in the second hole and then the, even the hole there just works as well which means it's got a bit of support coming across this sort of front panel giving it some strength and then I can still get my under tray hopefully on there and if not I might have to make up a bit of a custom under tray, but we'll see how we go with that. Maybe some spaces on the top here or just bend it a bit. I don't really care about the plastic one. I've been threatening to make aluminium ones for a long time. So I'll do that. That was okay. That was gone fine. So then from there, I now need to start thinking about where I'm going with the rest of it. Um, this end is going to come out of this part here and then hopefully go through that hole there. And then I've seen one guy who'd gone up through that hole between the alternator. Now, I suppose that's quite tight, but you've got to tie quite tight with the anti-roll bar here to go up through that hole, but we'll see if I can come in there and up there. That'll be quite neat. I can clock the turbo to suit that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get on with making the top supports today. So I'm gonna put um, a bar across here. I know that's not the strongest, but there are holes there already, which is quite nice. Um, I've already got a bar ready to go. I'll put it somewhere. So this bar here, and I'm gonna bolt that across those two bars there. I might actually go end on. And then I'm gonna run two metal bars down from the ends of it, and then into the those parts there, some bolts, some L-shaped bars coming down and across and into there to lift up the top of the intercooler. Because although those bars are doing an all right job down there, they have sagged a little bit under the weight of the intercooler. Um, so hopefully that'll make it a bit stronger. So we'll get on with that first and then see how much further I get on the video. I'm going like that quite a nice look. Hang down, hold on the top, hold it up. But my bar isn't long enough. I've realized the bar I got hold of is too short. I needed it to be 50 centimeters long to go between the top mount scenes cooler. And this one is 44, how annoying. So I'm literally sort of, I maybe need to go 55 to give me a bit of space with the holes in the end, maybe 54. Um, bugger. Unless I go like that across like that, which could work, could work like that on the ends. Maybe not quite as strong, it's gonna kind of pull down, isn't it? But um, we'll see, I'll make up this bit first um, and then see where we go from there.
quite got that loose enough yet. Nice and gentle. So potentially, I could go right round there, forward 90, down the hole there. Down there, down there, and across. I think that'll look a lot neater. Yeah, so I've just got the turbo clocked, which is nice. I've, um, I've left it slightly loose so I can keep moving it around while I get these pipes sorted out on bits and bobs. But um, quite frustratingly, I bought a 90 from Torx to come out the top here. And it hits the housing here, on the side here. So I can't, um, I can't get that in. So I'm gonna have to go for a straight converter and then instead buy a 90 one of these to come up and go across here and then be able to take the feed off and around the engine bay, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so these are going back and I shall await new ones. <laughs> So one of the jobs I'm going to do is use a little die grinder on a Dremel and I've just marked my oil drain for the Borg Warner because you can see it's actually a square shape from the gasket and the hole in the bottom of the turbo is actually a square shape. So I'm just going to sort of round that off a little bit and open it up. If you look at the posh um, the companies in America who make the AN10 oil drains, they do that and it looks quite smart. Um, so I'm going to do it too. So I will update you with the results. Well, that was slow progress and I caught the uh, face here that I'm going to have to now sand flat a little bit. Um, I'm basically just getting glass paper in there now, just to neaten up the finish. Yeah, it's taking a while. But it is, however, matching that a lot nicer now. Look, can you see it just sort of tapers in nicely? Bit of a tidying up to do and we'll see what we get to. Alright, so I've got a few things done. Um, four inch silicon joiner into a four inch piece of alley piping. Obviously it doesn't need um, swages on both ends or lump, the lump section on both ends so you can cut one end shorter. So I bought a 45, actually what arrived was a 90 but it still worked so I cut it to length um, and fit my filter. Um, I've got my oil feed on. People on Instagram are saying, what the heck is that oil feed doing going all the way around there? Well, that's going obviously around to my filter oil feed because this is an NA block, so it doesn't have an oil feed on this side. So it's going all the way around the other side. A bit like a, an NAT would do if you were doing an NAT on a 2J. So I'm going to obviously put some sort of heat protection on that there. Got a heat blanket coming for that there. Um, the other side of the house. I've started putting my waste on so, and I've also started putting um, some pipes on to see where I can get the the um, 
compressed side to go. So the compressed side looks like it's going down at the moment. Down between the alternator looks like a good space to go down. Some people obviously come across as standard to go out of the wing, but actually I think it looks really nice and clean not doing that. And actually it means I can have a less tight bend coming out of there. So then what happens on the other side, getting down into here, as it comes down that tight gap there, it won't be squidged when it's got an aluminium pipe unit. Um, it's going to come through this gap here, under, out this rather large hole here, and into the end of the intercooler, which now has a reduction on it. Good to go down to two and a half. And interestingly enough, the standard pipe that went across to the wing, this one, actually fits really quite nicely in there to join to that one. Uh, it's attacking me. Hold on. Now, if you can see that right there, so it comes across quite nicely into there. So I'm going to put a straight joiner, I think, in there, joining that up to the one coming down from the turbo, and then just trim this end bit here so it comes out a bit straighter, and then put in, and I think I've measured that, and it's a 135 degree bend. So 135 degree bend joiner hopefully will join those two together. So that's this side almost done. And then I've just smashed another hole for the intercooler in to go in this side. You can probably just see it, I hope, um, to go inside. But what's really annoying on this side, so I'm just crawling out of my car, is all of the power steering piping. So I'm gonna go and work out what the hell I have to do to shorten or get rid of this looped section of the power steering piping because Otherwise, it's going to be right in the way of my intercooler piping. But a lot of people have done it. So I'm going to go and ask on Toyota Sora Group, what did people do? So I've just offered up the dam pipe and it appears that I've got to make a shape that looks something similar to this funky shape. And I'm just going to tack this up with TIG welder. And then I can start, it's an R-Tech by the way, if you want to know. Start offering this bit up, the Marmon flange arrived today, strange old looking thing, I'll show you that when I take it off. It's basically a tapered fit V-band um, and I think I've got it fairly central. Apparently they're quite hard to centre but actually mine feels very much like it's found centre. So hey ho, I'll uh, see what I do. And then I've put the exhaust in position by sort of chocking it at the bottom there. You can just see the flexi pipe section and then I'm just going to start getting that ready to try and build up a downpipe probably gonna look shocking it's probably gonna be really untidy welds but at least I will have done it let's go so next thing I've started to fit is my oil catch can just a fairly cheap one, just make sure it's baffled and then I'm just going to go from there to there and then I think I'm going to just vent that to atmosphere again, another little, hope, another little filter on there. Um, looking at a lot of people's, they don't seem to even run the other side, they just blank the other side off, so probably going to do that too. Got a little measuring for lots of little pipes to do, so let's get them measured up and get them ordered. Another nice little eBay purchase, 18mm joiner. And that's going to go in that gap there. So just got to take that off, undo that bottom one, and swap that in. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> It is on. So yeah, that fits quite nice. It fits quite snug on the turbo. Um, I've got a Funk Motorsport um, heat proof cover to come for that. Um, and I've got one coming for the, the down, um, the drain as well. So best get onto the drain bit. I've still got to make up um, a drain um, mount to go to the sump. So I'm gonna take off the sump drain now, and then I can start copying it. And what I've bought is, uh, an AN10 drain connection, which is quite nice, and block of stainless steel. Dun, dun, dun. So, yep, fairly cheap, and sort of took me probably an hour and a half maybe to make that up. 
including drilling the holes. Still got to open up the big hole there. Let's do that. So after following a little guide on YouTube about how to make a bead roller for your alley tubing, I bought this little set of pliers. Yes, I put some silly long tubes on, but I didn't hold them there. I held them sort of there. Uh, and you squeeze your way around and work your way around, so you have to sort of file that out. And then to make yourself a nice bead on the end of a tube, which needs to be a different length, because I needed a 200 mil long straight, not a um, 300. I turned a little bead. Actually, it came out all right. Um, I was quite impressed with that. It's a big enough bead to hold the tube on, I think. Big enough lip. And then hopefully that'll stop the tube coming off. I just need to clean up the end a little bit and then it's ready to go on. So currently, um, downy pipe's finished. Why is my phone not focusing? Ah, there you go. Down pipe's finished. And um, waste flange. It's finished so that's ready to go onto the car so that's for the oil drain um, oil takeoff is finished I filed the underside to make it so it match the flange so it's a bit of a nicer drain on the oil drain the turbos so oil drain for the turbo is ready oil drain for the sump is ready tube tube is ready that's going in that one that goes straight down there down to the wing and then the wing is coming together here look so everything's coming together really. Um, got to put this drain on, waiting for some exhaust strap for the downpipe to put the downpipe on. Once I've done that, um, before before I do that, I've just got to join up the pipes for the wastegate to control the wastegate. And then all of the intercooler pipes are now here. So I've just got this one coming around here that needs joining up. Uh, I've got one to put on that side. A horrendous red pipe because they had no other black ones left. Gah. Um, which is going to look dog, but then you know, I see how much is just going to be in the bottom corner of the engine bay there. Ugh. Yeah, so that's going to go on, and then that means all of the pipes join up, and I've pretty much done my intercooler. Yes. So I feel like I'm in the final stages now of lots of little jobs to do. So I shall carry on and keep you updated. Because I'm not sure if you can see Mr. Drain. There he is. I'm just making him out of the back of the picture there. There you go, shiny bit, shiny threaded bit. There, just between those two pipes. The pipes are. Oh, there he is. There you go. One drain. So, really annoyingly, where the drain is, there's also bolt just that side of it just over there which is getting right in the way you can just see the tip of it actually in the photo in the picture there let's see if i can highlight it some more see that bolt is next to it so that holds in there you go now you can hold in your power steering line which means you can't come straight out the sump you've got to go up for 45 which means that which i bought to go at one end and that which I bought to go the other end and I've now discovered that's got to go at the turbo end to make it fit at the bottom of the turbo I need one for that end so that's going to come off I'm going to have to buy another one then ah. so another hard night at it um, sorry for the lack of video just need to get it done so Got a Funk Motorsport cover on my accelerator cable, because I've seen those melt. Got a Funk Motorsport cover just on that part of the breather, just on the main part, both of the main part of the heat, because I hear they might melt. <laughs> got a Funk Motorsport Velcro one coming for there. And I've finally got the waist on. The waist is an absolute pain, because I don't know if you can see in that gap there, but there's no way of tightening the AN10 up without doing it off the car and then bolting up the little bit onto the car, which is a pain. But there we go. Um, got the um, downpipe wrapped. Got the downpipe bolted up. Got the AFR just down there bolted in. Got the downpipe tightened up. Um, I drilled and tapped this um, 1 8 MPT hole for the wastegate control. 
the wastegate is mounted, the boost controller's floating around here somewhere that needs connected up. So basically I need to connect up the boost controller. Um, and that is nearly it. Right, after a couple of uh, mess arounds with the ECU, change the fuel in a little bit, they're running. The camera's probably shaking because my hands are shaking. My God, that was nerve wracking. Did put oil in the turbo, I was a good boy. Filled up really easily though, I tell you that, you only have to put a teeny bit in. I don't seem to have any leaks. Right, I'm gonna get under the car now, check for leaks, check around it. I can't film that. See what ECU says on the laptop. Sounding smooth though. See what happens, I'm gonna let it do a heat cycle and, and start checking things out. Ah! So just now you're looking about with AFRs, trying to get it to idle a little better. And as the turbo's running in, it just sits quite happily and idles around now, which is really nice. It did stay still to begin with, which is quite alarming. Um, I've reinstated the PCV over this side. Um, it seems to be a little bit happier. So I've got a catch can on this side, PCV on this side. And I think I'm going to get rid of that little filter and route it back into here when I've got my big filter on. But for now, that routes really nicely. I'm not getting any vapour off my catch can anymore. See the engine's drawing it away. It'll be interesting to see what happens on boost when, I'm, when I can go that far. And... AFR now, 13s, now it's getting fully hot, temps on sort of 94, oil pressure's gaining nicely, on 10 ms master fuel, so I'm just going to tweak the master trim and get that to 14.5, uh, now it's warm. She's looking better, better every time.